Timothy is one of the oldest engines on the Northwestern Railway, working there for many long years. He was also one of the first engines to arrive to the island, having working on the Ellsbridge and Light Railway. He was even older than engines like Edward. Despite his advanced age, Timothy was still in pretty good shape and felt as young as ever, having able to pull any train that was given to him. Timothy was old, yes, but he was well liked by everyone. He was a friend to all, and all were friends with him. Although, like most stories, not everything is perfect. Despite all of Timothy's kindness, there were still two who weren't really all that fond of Timothy. One morning, Timothy was just filling up with water. He was feeling quite exhausted from his passenger train and was looking forward to a rest. As he was tapping up on some water, he noticed that on the track across from him, a small engine was leaving some trucks at the siding. It was Neil, the box tank, the only surviving member of the old SMN. He looked very tired as he was leaving his trucks behind. Oi, Neil, you feeling alright mate? You look like you've been left without life. The work in the yard has been killing me, Neil sighed. And having to do all of these extra journeys takes a lot out of an engine. Well, 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 my dear Neil. I never expected to see you so old and feeble. Feeble am I now? I've left age long behind me, boy. Just a quick checkup at the work should do me good. Go for it, old man. I'll do your work. Leave it to the younger engines. Well, at least I'm not an ancient old fart like you. Ho, ho, ho. I better be going now. See you, Timothy. Timothy got straight to work doing the jobs that Neil was supposed to do. At first, they weren't that hard, as Neil was a small engine and didn't have many heavy loads. But soon, Timothy started to realize he had no time to do his own work on top of Neil's work. However, soon, the engine started to pick up on how tired Timothy looked, and always tried to offer their services to him to try and lighten his load. Timothy, however, would always decline their offer and say he'd be alright, but secretly, he wasn't. Later that night, Timothy was waiting at the station. He was waiting for Holland to arrive so he could leave, but Holland was running late, and Timothy was not happy at all. Timothy wasn't bothered too much, he just felt extremely bored waiting. Finally, Harwin, I have to leave too, you know. Why were you so late? Well, my original brake van broke down, and it took us nearly an hour to locate a new one. <sighs> Sorry I'm so late. I hope you aren't late for your train. Eh, better late than never, I guess. You're here now at least, but I better be going. I don't want to be any later, or I'll never hear the end of it. As Timothy descended down the line, he felt a slight breeze start to pick up, but he didn't mind at all. He was used to this, as he liked traveling down the line at night. He also wasn't scared to lose his way, as he knew the railway like the back of his buffers. The trucks weren't causing much trouble either. They were sleeping anyways, as trucks tend to do on late night trains. However, even without the trucks playing their tricks, trouble was still on the horizon.
Well, Timothy, I do have to apologize for the incident last night. I'll make sure to talk to the signalman who operates that area, and to make sure that an engine is never sent down that line. And as for the scrapped engines, eh, I'll just send them to be scrapped in a proper scrapyard. <sighs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. As the fat director stepped off, Timothy sighed loudly. Just then, Thomas came backing up into the siding with some trucks. He was shunting in the yards, and noticed Timothy looked glum. What's the matter, Timothy? You look upset. Oh, uh... uh n n nothing's the matter, Thomas. I'm just... Tired is all, Timothy said, very unconvincingly. Oh, come on, Timothy, Thomas said cheekily. Don't be like Neil, always taking rests. You're not that old. <laughs> I'm not that young either, Thomas. Now run along, Jiggy Tank Engine. I have work to do, and I'm sure you do. I'll pull the other one, Timothy. And Thomas puffed away, chuckling to himself. Maybe it was fortunate for Timothy that Thomas's chuckling distracted him from Timothy's frown. <sighs> Maybe I am too old for this, he sighed as he also puffed away. Later that afternoon, Timothy made his way to Napford Station, where he saw some familiar faces, but not all were so pleasant. Oh look, 87546, 98462 bowled. The old bat lost his way in the dark last night. Shame, I thought bats could see in the dark. Me too, 98462. Oh well, I guess this bat is just too old to see anything anymore. Piss off the both of you. Leave him alone. Oh, hey, a little birdie told me how spectacularly you two failed when you arrived here. Oh, please, darling, don't get yourself involved. Leave this to the men, please. Go to hell, you miserable bastard. I'm not gonna stand here and be insulted by a bunch of donkeys. Misogynist much? Oh, please, keep out of this, pipsqueak. Oh, fuck you already. Who the hell even likes you? While the others argued, Timothy's face slowly fell. The old engine really had enough. Timothy arrived at Lower Napford with his passenger train. He was still feeling rather down. He looked at a sign next to him on the station platform. The sign read, Solar Railway, really reliable and right on time. I'm not really reliable or right on time, Timothy said sadly. Maybe I am too old for this. Maybe I should just retire already. Don't talk like that, Timothy, his driver bellowed. I know the other engines have given you a lot of smack about being this old, but come on, it matters what you think about yourself, deep inside. Well, Liam, you really want to know what I think deep inside? That I should just get myself scrapped. I'm 103 years old, damn it. I feel like I have no life left in me. We'll go to the lead mine, Simafi. You'll feel better there, I know it. Whatever you say, driver. Timothy sadly shuffled into the lead mines, where he found a line of very rude trucks behind him. The line where Timothy had his accident was repaired, as the lead mines were still frequently used to carry out rock, stone, or lead. This is the last place I needed to be, Timothy thought to himself. Ever since his accidents, he'd always felt anxious going to the mines, but he never told his driver. <laughs> You stupid trucks! I didn't come here to be insulted by some hooligans! What are you gonna do about it? I'm going to make this disappear! Maybe I will! Timothy scowled. What happens next? Timothy says it was an accident, but his driver says something came over him. Whatever happened, Timothy lurched his driver off the footplate and shot back. Told you, Timothy barked. 
Later that day, after being punished by the fat director, Timothy was waiting in the sidings. He was waiting for a train to pass with his goods train. He was feeling really bored. Suddenly, he heard a puffing noise and assumed it was the engine he was waiting for to pass. It was Nicholas. He was feeling very annoyed, and he was also carrying some gunpowder vans. Nicholas stopped next to the water tower. He was feeling very run down, and needed a nice cool drink. Timothy was on the line next to the water tower, and he noticed Nicholas was as glum as him. What's the matter with you? And why are you carrying gunpowder vans? Those are very dangerous. That's probably why 87546 made the yard manager make me take these vans. God, he and his buddy 98462 are so insufferable. Where did they even come from? Well, the fat director got them on loan from the mainland, but I don't think they'll be on loan here for much longer. <laughs> you can say that again. Uh, I can't believe I still have to take these vans. I'll blow to smithereens. Well, 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 what's this? Causing railway property damage? I am surprised. Shove off, 87546. Why don't you go bother someone else? Or go hang out with 98462? Oh, Tim, I'm hurt. I thought we were best friends. Yeah, right. Who'd want to be seen with you? I wouldn't, that's for sure. Oh, come on. Can't you guys take a joke? Well, I can take pretty much everything. The only thing I can't take is your ugly face. And another thing, I don't think I can take your ugly color. Black is way better. Well, I better go. Sorry, Nicholas, I don't want to pick up 87546's body odor. Ciao! And he puffed away. Hm, <laughs> understandable. You stink, K7546, and in more ways than one. A very cross Timothy made his way down the line. He was still feeling cross about the incidents at the lead mines. He was also even crosser about 98462 and 87546. Then suddenly, it happened. Bother! This is the last thing I needed. <sighs> Liam, there's a signal box above us. Go talk to the signalman about getting us some help. Right on it! <sighs> I hope things don't get any worse. I mean, how could they? Oh, I just had to ask, didn't I? Hmm, <laughs> yes, you did. Now, let's get you moving, Zero. We wouldn't want you blocking the line, would we? Ow! Could have gone around that a bit more delicate. Oh, be quiet back there. 87546 growled, and the cattlecade puffed away leaving the driver and the fireman behind. Did you actually think I was there to rescue you? Pah! No, 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 Timothy. 
I'm here to get rid of you. I can't have you or anyone else dragging attention to me and 98462, foiling our plans. You've been dragging all the attention onto yourself, you fool. And what plan? Me and 98462 have a master plan to become the premier express engines on this island, and we can't have you causing stirrups. It's your own fault, you bloody fool! If you kept your mouth shut for one day, then you wouldn't be so hated! Oh, shut up already! You don't need to try and convince me. I won't listen to you. Now you better stay here and not make any sounds. If you do, then me and 98462 will arrange your funeral. Damn it! My driver was left at the signal box. Oh, and I can't move on my own. What will I do now? No one's ever gonna see me here. Huh, that's strange. I wonder why the points are set to this line. No one ever uses it. <gasps> oh my goodness! Timothy, what are you doing here? It was safe to say that after Timothy finished explaining the whole story, Thomas the Tank Engine was completely outraged. When he took Timothy to the next station to question him even further, Timothy wouldn't reply at all, and that's when the strangest things started to happen. After that day, strange things started to happen with Timothy. He would stop talking to the engines altogether, even to the ones who were kind to him. He also became very weak, and started to lack in his work performance. And safe to say, all the engines were worried. But one night, that would all change. One night, a late night passenger train's engine broke down at Napford Station. They needed a quick replacement, and the only engine available was Timothy. Timothy was swiftly coupled up to the passenger train, and with the guard's whistle sounding, Timothy puffed away. The moon was full and Timothy was making his way down the line. He was listening to the coaches behind him. When suddenly, at Crosby, there was 98462. He was waiting in the same siding Timothy was, waiting for his train to pass. As Timothy was passing by 98462, he made another one of his rude remarks, and that was it. The driver and fireman claimed that the regulator got stuck, but 98462 says that that night, Timothy's face went from a concerned expression to pure rage. Whatever the case may be, Timothy never stopped at the station, and instead, he just went faster and faster! The next morning, they sent Albert with a work train to go check out the mess. They found the coaches resting soundly a few miles away from the station. 
Inside the coaches, both driver and fireman were there along with some passengers. When asked what happened, they said that their engine's regulator got stuck, and they uncoupled the engine from the train when they realized that they couldn't stop it. They also reported hearing a massive explosion up the line, so Alfred and the workmen went to go explore. And what was seen that day would never be forgotten by neither the workmen or Alberts.